Hello, hello, everyone. Was that great or what? I hope that got you going. Uh, we're still waiting for the room to fill. Um, hey, can you do me a favor and um, pull up your chat and tell us where you are tuning in from and uh, what you hope to get out of this service, out of this training, out of this gathering, this time together. So, so excited, my friends that you're here today. So let me pull up my um, notes here. So you are in the right place. If you want to envision your mission, this is a one day blueprint builder workshop. And if you're seeking God for your next step, um, then you are right where you should be today. Amen. So our goal is to pour as much value in you with the time that we have together. This one step can change the whole trajectory of your life. So do me a favor. Okay. Plug in, turn off your phone, close the door to the, the distractions, get your favorite coffee or tea and buckle up for an amazing Ride. So thank you. Thank you all for joining in. If you're watching now live or on the replay, so excited. So I'm going to introduce our prayer coordinator, which is Angel Davis. She's going to kick us off with a powerful prayer. Angel, um, so glad to have you with us today, sweetheart. So Come on in and get us started. Hope oh, you're muted, honey. There we go. Can you hear me? All good? You're good. Great. It is such a beautiful day um, here in Western New York. And I don't know um, where you're listening in or where you may listening in from uh, in the future. But we know God's glory is so great that every day is a beautiful day. And we are celebrating not only summer, but what that season stands for. And we're going into prayer because we know that this is a time for refreshing and um, revigorating our souls and our spirits, um, our intellect, our emotions, every part. Because we know that God is a God that cares about every part from our spiritual to our mind to our bodies. And this is such an amazing, amazing workshop. And we just want to ask God's blessing on it right now as we go into prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, for this day that you have made. We thank you, Father, for all of these women and everyone that's going to be listening in on this uh, wonderful workshop in the days to come. We pray, Father God, for your anointing, for your blessing. But not only that, Father, we pray, Father God, for your guidance, even now. Um, so much work and sweat and tears have gone into creating this workshop. And we know, Father God, that nothing comes from you will be in vain. And we know, Father God, that there are such far-reaching effects that we can't even think or imagine. So we ask, Father God, that your word goes forth today. And not only does it bless the ones that are listening now, but even in future generations, we don't, there's nothing that you can't do, Father. There is no box that some man can put you in. Your word will never return to you void. And Father, we ask not only for your blessing now, but we also ask, Father God, for your divine, uh, your divine devotion and your divine connection. Because Father, you what we know that you are a God of connection, spiritual connection. As you uh, bind us women together, men and women of all walks of life. We also know Father God, that this is not the end, but this is just the beginning. We pray Father God for our leadership. We ask Father God your blessing and guidance on Lynette and all of her staff and all of the volunteers that's put time and effort into this. And we ask Father God that you guide her even now, that you lead her, that everything that comes out of her mouth 
Father God, will be from you. So I, my prayer is always, Father God, less of me, more of thee. Father, when they look on us, we need the world to see you. We are image bearers of the one true Christ. And Father God, even as we represent all, all walks of life, all different social statuses, all different occupations and vocations and gifts and talents. Father, you bind us together through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are so honored to be part of this family. So we ask again, Father, for your divine blessing and your guidance on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now I would like to introduce the, I call her the chief, <laughs> the chief encouragement officer, CEO, but she is also, I have trouble keeping up with her. She has such a vision that God has put in her heart for this ministry and for the world um, that she is a little person. If you ever met her, but she is a tornado, I tell you. <laughs> And um, I hope uh, that you ever get the chance to meet her in person because just being in her presence, you feel the presence of God. She carries him with her. And you know I, that this is going to be a great workshop because she's put not only sweat and tears and heart into it, but the word of God. And she carries that everywhere she goes. Um, so with no further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Lynette Rainville, the Chief Visionary and Encouragement Officer of Daughters United and, the, and has set a platform for all of us to learn today. So thank you and welcome, Ms. Lynette. Aw, thank you, Angel. <laughs> you are just such an encouragement to me. All of you are. I just, you encourage me by showing up today. So thank you, everybody. Like, it just, this is my heart. I want to just help you take your next step. So if you haven't already done so, um, you can load your workbook in the chat. Um, you can load, download your workbook. To Neil, if you could put it in the chat again. And then um, actually, Angel, I'm going to ask you a favor because some people somehow did not get the Zoom link. Could mm -hmm. you go ahead and put the Zoom link in our Esther Calling group? Tell sure. them live now, and then also give them the link to the workbook. Tanil's going to put it in the, yep, it's dropped. She put it in there. That would be great. So people can, can join us. So ready? Are you ready? We're going to get started, everybody. Um, tell me if you're ready. Put it in the chat. Ready, ready? Ready, set, go. All right. So here we go. Here is one of my almost famous quotes. It embodies what I've done and who I am and where God is taking me and you. Do what you can right where you are with what you have in your hand. Let that sit with you for just a moment. All right, do what you can right where you are with what you have in your hand, just like the prophet Elijah asked the widow, what do you have in the house? What do you have in your hand? Many of us feel like that same answer that she would give, nothing, Lord, except. Nothing except. God can use that little thing that you maybe have disregarded, that you didn't even realize was so powerful that could be uh, the, the start of something. And I'm praying today that this workshop will help you to envision what can be, amen? So I looked up some true stats um, that LifeWay Research did. Um, they polled some pastors back in 2015, so it's probably even, uh, the numbers are a little higher now. Well, they showed that 250 pastors leave the ministry every month. 84% of them are on call 24 seven. And that 54% of them are overwhelmed by their role. 
Now, if families weren't already in trouble before the pandemic, we are seeing suicide, addiction, abuse, death, and divorce on the rise in unprecedented numbers. So my friend, let me ask you this question. Do you think that God needs you to show up on the scene right now, right where you are with what he has put in your hands? Tell me, go ahead, comment in the chat. I wanna hear from you. Well, if you are here today, it's probably because you want to make a difference. You want to be the change, change maker and the kingdom influencer in the world. So you are in the right place today. So let's start with a little brainstorming. Here's a picture of a real person in a real situation. Let's um, just put some imagination around it. Let's say she's a single mom. She might have a disability. She might be seeking solace um, from a domestic violence situation or even rape. She might be a drug addict. Her child might be sick. She might be um, pregnant and wanting an abortion. So can you imagine with me the type of needs that they might have? Go ahead. You can put in the chat if you want to put in there. Anybody? I'm, this is interactive. She might need something like, okay, I'm seeing... She might need crisis pregnancy. She might need um, emergency shelter, right? Yes. So she might just need um, a friend to guide her with some things. She might need some identity counseling, okay? Um, there's so many things that, you know, I'm sure you're thinking of something in your head right now that she could use. So let me ask you this, if this woman came to your church or in your circles, yes, I see that, Ronald, counseling, definitely. So if this woman came to you um, or in one of the ministries or your circles, um, are there ministries right now in existence that you could refer her to? What is the aftercare she will need? are one of those areas in your wheelhouse. What do you need to do today to start preparing? So this is what I'm saying, my friend. This is what the essence of Daughters United is about. We can't all do everything, but we all can do something. We all can do that um, thing that God has put on our heart. So great, today we are going to stop dreaming and start doing. We've been dreaming. I'm sure you all have journals and notebooks and things full of different ideas, but God wants to get us activated. And I'm praying that this will be that push to do that. So today you're going to learn the steps of how to discover your big why, to decide to dismantle control of those border bullies that are holding you back. You are going to be able to um, see the mission blueprint um, and write it out by defining your who, your what, and your how. You're going to drop a roadmap to your destination, your vision, and determine your steps and deploy your dream. So I want to introduce you to an amazing person. So I'm just going to give her little bio to you right now. You might even know her. This person's a little complex and she's been through some crazy things in her life. What a story she has. And even though she's been through uh, some scrapes and bruises, she still has this huge heart for God and she wants God to use her to make a difference. She's uniquely gifted with some pretty cool talents, passions and dreams. But there's one problem. She doesn't feel qualified she doubts herself, and she at times feels unworthy to walk out this ridiculously amazing dream that God has been growing inside of her. Can you guys guess who she is? Yep, it's you. It's me. It's all of us here. God wants me to tell you today, my sister, 
you are enough. Let me give you a scripture from Proverbs 16, 9. In the heart of man, he plans his way, but the Lord will establish his steps. So this little compass are the steps that we're going to take today. This is our mission compass. This is really the beginning. This is where, if you could just picture um, an embryo getting fertilized, this is that place. This is the sacred space that the Lord uses. Amen. So this vision and mission, and in order to find that out, we need to go around this cycle of your big why. Who will you reach? What will you need? How will you help? Where will you go? And when will you do it? So before we move, move on, and if we haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'd like to share a little bit about me and my why. So if you didn't catch it earlier, my name is Lynette Rainville, and I grew up in the inner city of Buffalo, New York in the 60s and 70s. It was the days of the original bell-bottom jeans, the Brady Bunch episodes, um, Little House on the Prairie, I stayed up late Monday night to watch it, and the early days of Sesame Street when Elmo wasn't even born yet. So when I was 10 years old, the blizzard of 77 hit. Snowfall was a record 100 plus inches um, with snow drifts 30 feet tall, burying houses and winds from 45 to 70 miles an hour for days. It shut our city down for 11 days. My city's also famous for buffalo chicken wings. And here, I'm gonna tell you a secret. The secret is Frank's hot sauce. So we will put the link for the recipe in the chat, but here it is. You can take a screenshot of it. So just a little um, tidbit about my history um, and also that I am a mama of two grown kiddos in their 30s already, I can't believe that. And these two beautiful babies call me Gigi. They're my grand babies. They're my joy bubbles. I call them M and E. I'm also a life learner with experience and education in nursing, pastoral care, chaplaincy, advanced DISC and personality training. And I'm a certified John Maxwell coach. And a fun fact, I'm a veteran who served in the U.S. Navy as a hospital corpsman from 1984 to 1985. So I'm telling you all this to say that God uses all of our life to bring us right to where we are to equip us for what God has next for us. So all of these giftings has placed me in a position to be a visionary and founder of several nonprofits and outreach ministries. And currently I serve, as Angel said, the Chief Encouragement Officer of Daughters United. So what is my big why? Well, I grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, on the west side. Well, there's actually a west side of Buffalo and there's the better side and the not so better side. Well, I grew up on the poor side. So Determining to beat the odds and to better my life, I joined the military in search of furthering my education. But four years later, I was medically discharged from the military, married with one baby and labeled disabled due to a back injury and a surgery that went sideways. This wasn't the future that I planned for my life. And I'm sure many of you have had those situations where it wasn't what you planned, but God, right? So fast forward two more years, instead of walking out my plan to be a Naval medical officer, I was now a young mother with two babies and struggling to make ends meet with only one income. After bills, we didn't have enough money to cover groceries, much less any other necessities. My big dream started one day when I was upset about not having any clothes that I could fit into. And my babies were quickly growing out of their clothes too. And I prayed and God showed up. 
he gave me this great idea. I was looking at my clothes and those skinny jeans that I was not going to get back into anytime soon. And God said, why not trade in your skinny jeans and get other clothes your family needs? Wow, God, I love it. I'm excited. I'm going to do this. Surely they would do this. So the day finally came when I rallied up my courage. I gathered my bag of clothes with me and my two kiddos in tow. I made my way to the local thrift store. As I entered the store, the clerk mentioned and said, you can take your donation to the back. Hmm, now what? I waited till she finished checking out her customers and we, my entourage of the toddler, the baby, the stroller, the bag of clothes, um, I, <laughs> I rolled up to the counter, my heart pounding and the words actually got caught in my throat. Jeesh, I'm not asking for a handout. Finally, I explained what I was hoping to do. Exchange these nice and almost brand new jeans for some things that my family could use. She curtly explained, I'm sorry, that's just not our policy. You can take your donation out back. So bag in hand, pride stripped, feeling defeated, I headed back to my car. At that moment, my two-year-old, three-year-old daughter asked something like, Mommy, we're not shopping? Oh, that's all it took. The dam broke, the hot tears rolled down, and I looked up to God for help. Then something happened to me. Somewhere from the store door to my car door, God planted a mustard seed in my heart to someday, somehow, help other mothers and their families who would find themselves in my same situation. Little did I know that day in 1991 that God would take my tears and my one bag of clothing and turn it into a million dollar outreach center, meeting thousands of food and clothing and infant needs every year. This didn't happen overnight, mind you. I had that dream growing on the inside of me for a couple of years. I tried to ignore it, but the vision kept growing and I felt pregnant with purpose, but I had a problem. I had no midwife, I had no mentor, or even a big sister I can talk to to help guide me. I was like, what do I do with this? How do I even take the first step? Well, my friends, how did I do it? I started. I started with one step and then another. I did what I could right where I was with God, with what God put right in my hands. I was faithful with the little and God made it more. And that is why I am impassioned today to help you because I feel like many of you have that same problem. You don't know where to start. You don't have that um, in, immersion in a culture of encouragement. And let me tell you, those early years were full of trial and error. I fell and skinned my knees a lot. I wanted to quit a lot, but the dream was too big for me to ignore. And I feel like that is you too. You're here today because the dream on the inside of you is too big to ignore. Sister, I know what it's like to feel like you're going to deliver a spiritual nine pound, 11 ounce baby and no one near to catch it. No midwife. I know what it's like to have a dream in my heart and not to be able to take that first step or know how to take that next step. So if you have your workbook, um, page five of your workbook, we're going to go on to that. This is my big why, and I am on mission to change that. I believe this is why God has entrusted me. He downloaded this, this blueprint, the seven steps to share with you today. So here are the steps, but we'll be breaking it down even more um, as we go on our journey together today. So we're going to discover our big why. A lot of you already have inclinations. You already have probably journals full of your big why. We're going to get that more clear. 
Um, we're going to help equip your mission by taking your inventory, um, really looking at the things that you have at your disposal. We're going to talk about engaging your tribe, how to enlist your talent, establishing your tent, your home base, expanding your territory, and finally envisioning your mission. So can I share a dream with you? Oh, before I do that, if you're able to chat in the chat, I wanna um, ask you, if you would categorize yourself into three, one of these three categories, where would you feel you're at today? Are you in discovery mode? Are you in development mode or are you in deployment mode? It means you're already walking your dream out to some degree. Anybody? Let's see if I can see in the chat. Development, love that. I see some discovery. And I know there's those of you, yes, between discovering development, awesome, great. Some people are still typing. Well, if you're just in your discovery zone, you're still in the right place. Discovery development, and we go through this cycle, my friend, over and over again, let me tell you, okay? I'm gonna take a sip right now before I go into the the next, the next slide, because this is a, this one's going to get you. Let me see. Oh, I see one, redevelopment. I love it. That's right. That's what we're all about. The Lord constantly has us on the potter's wheel. And if we're wise, we will become that soft moldable clay instead of the stiff Play and also God's building new wines. He's He's creating new wine skins for the future, for the next generation. So you are in the right place, my friends. Yay! So let me um, get to share something with you, if it's okay. It's a dream that the Lord gave me years ago, and um, I'm actually walking out this dream right now. So today is actually a big step forward for this. Um, this was a real dream, like I was sleeping and woke up with it. And it was one of the very few dreams that I, it's been etched in my memory. Like I can taste it, I can see it, I can smell it. That type of dream that you know is a prophetic dream that God was speaking to my destiny. So let me share this with you. In my dream, I walked inside the back door of a church. There was a long hall and I could see that there was a room lit at the end of the hall. I noticed it was a kitchen and then I stepped up to the kitchen sink. What I saw seared a holy ache in my soul. Laying in the sink, I found premature babies that were abandoned, all laying in a pile, one on top of the other, much like the size of this baby in the picture that you're seeing. Very, very tiny, but still fully um, shaped, as you can see, that it was a baby. I rolled up my sleeves and I jumped into action, Navy Corman style. One by one, I gently picked up each baby. I washed them in the warm water and I breathed the breath of life into their mouths. And they began to pink up, they began to move. They began to wake up and use their voices, and they started to cry. Curiously, I found several incubators lined up on the other side of the room, and one by one, I placed them in the incubators to develop and to come to full term. I cried out in my dream, Lord, where are all the nursemaids? Where are all the midwives? Where are all the mamas who will feed the next generation? Just like Nehemiah, this is how my holy ache started. In Nehemiah, he um, heard about what was happening in Jerusalem. This is, and the wall of Jerusalem was broken down and torn down and the gates were burned with fire. And Nehemiah said, 
When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. And he prayed, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, you keep covenant with those you love and those that keep your commandment. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes be open to the prayer of your servant who is praying before you day and night. Please forgive the sins of my people. Let your ear be attentive and give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man, for I was the cupbearer to the king. Here's the thing, my friend. God needs your dream in action. This is your Nehemiah moment. This is your Esther calling. God has positioned you somewhere with that holy ache in your heart. So let me just pray right now. Lord, I pray over these holy aches. Lord God, you are reviving some. You are pouring fresh other onto others. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, by the power of your spirit. You are just equipping. You are stirring those those embers in each heart that this training, Lord, and your prompting and your anointing would set a blaze and set a fire anew, Lord God, those passions in my sister's heart to do the thing you've called them to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So if you're wondering a little bit more about this ministry that we're, we're growing and developing. Um, just want to kind of give you what our mission is. We help kingdom-minded sisters to discover and to develop her God-given calling so that she can be launched as an effective arrow to confidently, or I like to say godfidently, impact her circle of influence. So I ask you, my sister, what is that mustard seed? What is that dream that you've been carrying on the inside of your heart? So here is an encouragement from the word. Shall I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? Let me just camp there a minute. God impregnated you with something. Shall he bring it? and grow it and develop it in you and all the pain of stretching and, and being fat with pregnancy? <laughs> Would he do all of that and, and not give delivery? I should say not. My friend, can I tell you that you are not here today by accident? I and my team, we prayed for you to find us so that we could pour courage into you and to tell you, that God wants to use what you carry right where you are with what you have for such a time as this. Whew, that was a lot. And now that you know about me and us, I want to learn about you. So in the chat, I'd love for you to help me out by answering a few questions. And if you are watching the replay, this would help me out a lot. I'm actually doing research for a book I'm writing, and this is part of it. So these questions I'm about to ask you, if you could message us or send us an email with an answer to these questions, it would be extremely helpful to me and to us and to the furtherance of helping our sisters in the future. Okay, so here we go. I already asked this question, actually. What stage are you in? Development, discovery, or deployment? And you already asked if there anyone who didn't answer and was just jumping on, you can go ahead and, yep. <laughs> Between development and deployment, yes, you are, girl. I see you. That's awesome. So here's another question. If you could just snap your fingers and you knew you couldn't fail, which of these outcomes would you want the most? To finally birth your dream, to have a bloop, that's one, two, 
to have a blueprint to follow, or three, to learn how to pivot your program or your ministry to an online platform. So go ahead and write that down in the chat. I'd love to see it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, birth your dream. Yes, we're gonna do that. Woohoo! Can't wait to see all of these dreams starting to take shape. Okay, of these four, here's the next question. Oh, Angel, blueprint and pivot. We're gonna do it, sister. We're going to do it. And I give a little minute, so people are still typing. Birth and blueprint, love it. Ronalyn, Ronnie, great, great to have you. I love interaction, so awesome. All right, so what I'm going to do next is one more question here. And we're gonna go over this today in pretty good detail. Anyone ever heard of border bullies? Okay, that's great. Yes, 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 I see. Wonderful. So I've targeted some of the big four, I call them the big four. Um, so I'm gonna ask you a question. Of these four border bullies, which has been the biggest bully to you? Which has been the biggest challenge? Imposter syndrome, comparison trap, perfection prison, or fear of failure? Ed, imposter syndrome, yes, that's a big one. Yep, perfectionism is my, that kind of can paralyze me sometimes. Um, yes, yeah, so with the imposter syndrome, basically God is calling you to do something, but you don't feel qualified enough. You feel like you are being someone you're not. And my, can I tell you a secret, my friend? And we're going to get to explaining these a little further. We all kind of feel a little funny wearing our new shoes. And that is the freedom piece that I'm going to give you today. That as you're just starting to walk in your destiny, the shoes will feel a little clunky and a little big. So that doesn't mean you weren't meant for those shoes, but sometimes you need to grow into them. Amen. Or you need to break them in. Now, comparison trap, we all know, oh, well, I'm not like her. Oh, I didn't do it as good as her. I didn't. Can I tell you something? The world is big, 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 huge world. And God has put something on the inside of you that only you can do to reach your who. There's a person assigned to you right now, this very moment, this very moment. Just like those babies in the sink in my dream, okay? Those, that dream is my fuel. It keeps me going because I know that if I don't move forward in this thing that God called me to do, those babies aren't going to make it. Those babies have been abandoned and set aside, and a lot of them unintentionally. It wasn't a mistake in the dream. I was in a, in a church, Okay, God is going to use everything to further your calling and your dream. Okay, I have some more. Three and four, perfection, fear of failure, comparison and failure of expectations, not fitting the stencil at the moment, yet medically sidelined. I could, could relate to that, sister. And, you know, we are going to defeat these bullies today. So um, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for your, your input. I love that we're interactive. So let me ask you another question. Where do you feel called? We're gonna go to the next slide. In Daughters United, we've identified um, now 32 different subcategories and I call them 
coins. This is our circles of influence, okay? So we, that, this term got started with Daughters United, that this is a coin. Now of this list, can you tell me what you might be really feeling that burden towards? What is the passion? What has your life experience has been? You can put numbers, you don't have to type the whole thing in, but I'll just read through the list and maybe something will prompt you, okay? Addiction recovery, arts, drama, and dance, the beauty industry, business, corporate, caregiving, children and teens, chronic illness, the college scene, disability, divorce, crisis pregnancy, domestic violence, education or teaching, entrepreneur, grief care, government, health and wellness, homeschooling, life coaching, marriage, media, mental health, military and veterans, ministry and leadership, motherhood, family, nonprofit and outreach, programs, sexuality and trauma, singles, widows, empty nesters, support group leaders, worship leaders, writer, speaker, vlogger. Anyone want to write what hit them? Awesome. Got, got quite a few here. Woohoo. I love it that you're like, you're actually categorizing this. You need to circle those because we're going to need these later. Teaching, writing, speaking. I love it. And uh, let's see, a le another one, Danielle said. Um, so we have children, we have entrepreneur, we have homeschooling, marriage, mental health. Um, this is awesome. Yes, this is awesome. So if you're already working in a ministry or a project, tell us what it is in the chat. Let's see if you can. Okay, we also have some more focus areas. It's um, education, health and wellness, love it, mental health, and writing and speaking. It's definitely growing. Now, let me ask you, is there a burning coin, a circle of influence that we have not put on our list? Are you saying, Lynette, this is like a big one and you missed it. So I really want to know that even, even here in the chat or email us, message us, because we, you are part, you are a beta test group if you didn't know it already. So we are building this to grow it bigger, to make it better for our sisters coming up in the ranks. All right, well, I think it is time for us to go to a discovery session. We're gonna transition now to our discovery session. Is everyone good? Everyone still with me? Um, yep, and just like the slide says here, what is your story? Ask you that again. What is your story? You only can walk out your story. Don't squeeze yourself into the box that you don't fit in. Step out of that box and go where God is leading, especially for such a time as this, my friends, God is, is starting to bring together an army of women warriors, okay? And this is part of it, that we are going to equip and train each other, much like David did in the cave when he had all of his mi misfits. And we might all feel like misfits, but you know what they did in that cave? They readied their mission. They became a tight knit unit, an army, loyal and, and strong, ready to, to walk out the mission that God has for them. So 
let me just tell you that you are God's workmanship, okay? God doesn't make any junk. That's a saying from the 70s um, that we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance. Amen. So it's no mistake. It's not a surprise to God where you are. But he is asking you to take those steps forward with him. <coughs> so what I'd like to do now, I'd like to share a journal entry um, with you from uh, my prayer time with the Lord about a year ago. So let this be your kind of like devotional moment today, right? So Papa God, help me to see what you see. Help me to hear what you hear. Help me to feel what is on your heart. I see the dreamer with a vision so big that she's shaking in her boots. I see the one who is sinking to the bottom of a pit, losing sight of hope in the glimmer of light that she once had. I see the worker bee, the industrious one, forever learning and building, but empty, searching for her true purpose and her identity. I see the sick and the injured and the broken, those afraid, needing to be filled with faith over fear and help to see themselves as victors and not victims. Now here is the encouragement that God gave me to scribe. My daughter, it's time. It's time to advance. It's time to lift up your voice. It's time to take territory back. It's time to bring light to the darkness. It's time to bring living water to the dry places. It's time to war. For I am bringing about a dismantling project and a rebuilding project. Nothing will ever be the same. Daughter, it's time. Prepare your storehouses, ready your infirmaries, build your schools, train your soldiers, establish your headquarters in order to affect my grace, love, peace, and provision in the territory that I have given you to occupy. Hmm. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I pray that this word in season encourages my sister today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow, I am uh, praying you're getting lots of good. Um, this is a soaking time, okay? This is, we started with the fun stuff. And yes, I know this is kind of heavy as we're going through this and this reflection. So um, if you have your workbook, you can turn to page six. Um, I have some discovery questions. And we're on slide, yes, there's our assessment. And if you do have this, um, flip it over to the blank side or get a blank sheet of paper out because I have some extra questions the Lord gave me for you. So this is your special time my friend right now. Lord and Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just pour into my sisters, just surround them with this safe space, this sacred space right now as they answer these questions. And uh, Tamil, if you could type the question in the chat as I speak it, that'd be really helpful. Um, question one. What spurs on a holy ache in your soul? What is that holy ache? What is your babies in the sink moment? What does that thing look like to you? Can you repeat that one again, please? What spurs on a holy ache in your soul? Mm -hmm. Mm 
as a child, what did you love to do? Was it playing with your doll? Was it, I love to make mud pies in the backyard. I would take, remember those old, those, um, I still, they still make them, those um, pot pies. I would take the metal tin and use them and do dirt for the crust and get berries off of, they were poisonous berries off the bush. <laughs> so I love to create. So that was a clue. These are clues to everything we're doing today is intentional. Believe me, you're not going to see it at the end of today. Okay, here's another question. When someone um, asked you as a child, who are you going to be when you grow up? What did you tell them? Did you say a teacher? Did you say a mommy? Did you say astronaut? <laughs> what did you say? Again, these are all clues, my friend. If I'm going too fast, just tell me. <laughs> I bet some memories are popping up in your in your mind, huh? In your childhood. Okay. Now this is gonna be a real test. List 10 talents that the Lord has given you. Is it writing, talking, talking's a talent, cooking, decorating, color, putting colors together. I know this takes a little bit of time. Hmm. So of those 10, we're gonna look at our top four. So again, you might wanna go back through this. So just for time's sake, we might you know, move a little further, you know, a little quicker through this, but I really encourage you to go back through these questions at the end um, or at another time. So take a look at your top four talents. You know, that is something that God wants us to, to really look at today. He put those in you, he put those gifts inside of you. Um, what most excites you about the kingdom, about what God is doing on the earth today? Like, that's another question. Is it the opportunity, like for me, the opportunity to go online? I mean, I know COVID hit us hard and church does not look like it used to. You know, numbers of churches, especially mega churches, they're about half. It's, they've lost half of their people. So I see it, you know, it's like for every negative, God, there's a positive that God can work God will work good out of evil, right? So for me, what most excites me about right now is that this online virtual world, we've just scratched the surface with it. We've just started tapping into it. And honestly, the thing that excites me the most angers me the most. That's the, sec the next question. What angers you the most about the world? Ah, oh, the online platforms. <laughs> right? Have you not seen people just tore down and just really injured by what's going on? And even well-meaning uh, people putting things, it's even caused great division in the body of Christ. And that makes me upset. That angers me. Okay, three more questions. Who do you love to help, assist, or support? Like, what comes natural to you? Is it like, oh, 
there's a kid in the room, that kid's on my lap. Like, I love that. If it's an elderly person who needs encouragement, maybe that's you. If it's a married woman um, going through a tough time, maybe that, you know, who do you love to help? Who do you love to assist and support? Who do you feel called to lead, teach, or heal? So that's a calling. You feel called to lead them, to teach them, to heal them in an area. What is that area? And it's, it's like a magnet to you, right? It's not something you just like dreamed up. It's like, or you just can't help yourself. You're like pouring it out. Who do you want to serve, inspire, or impact? For me, it's Christian Women's Ministries. That is my heart. That is our lane. And when you get focused on your lane, my friends, the world, <laughs> you, those people will find you. We are, again, we are not called to do everything, but we are called to do something. And when you focus in your niche, and even in that subset of the niche, like we had those 32 coins, when you focus on that and you get laser focused, you become an expert in that lane, in that area. So I just wanna tell you that little tip here. So it's so important, this work that we're doing right now. So my friend, my sister, my, just wanna, Cross that screen and hug you and tell you when the Holy Spirit deposits that holy ache inside of you, it's him showing you the problem. It's like a, it's like a spotlight. He's showing you the problem. So if he's showing you the problem and he's giving you the passion to be part of the solution, that's your calling. That's your calling, my friend. You see the problem, and God emboldens you to be part of the solution. So now we're going into a sacred space where we can listen to the voice of the Father. Okay? Here is in the pressing, and in the pressing, you will get the oil. Here in the quiet, you will hear his voice. And here in the stopping, you will see clearly how to start again. So we're going to give you a little bit of time, five minutes, to just process the questions we just said and to go through your discovery assessment if you haven't yet. So um, just give you a little time, a little mental break to just pour in you and Jesus. Go ahead and think about these questions and answer them. So go ahead. Hey, we're back. Wow, how did everybody do? Tell me in the chat. Are you, are you still like in it? <laughs> it's a lot, I know. Let's see here. Let's see if I can see your chats. Anyone get any new revelation? Does anyone want to be brave enough to share? Actually, to come on screen and share. Oh, I see some. So it was difficult for me. Yep, the deep work is difficult, but you know, um, we need to get into this posture of prayer that the Lord wants to speak to us because I know what it's like to have this dream like growing inside of you and, and shaking. And I was that girl shaking in my boots saying, I, I'm, I'm not prepared enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not ready enough to, to do this thing. And in some cases, um, when you have 
wounds and hurts in your life and your past. Um, for me, it was at, I was going to share this a little bit later, but I'm going to share it now. Uh, I was around 30 years old and uh, I went to a retreat in Lockport, New York. And I remember being in a prayer line. They were doing ministry. There was worship. Isn't he, I think was playing in the background. And there was about 30 of us there. And um, the, the people, the pastors praying for the ladies were all the way down the end of the room. And I'm just standing there praying. And the Lord has this vision in my heart. I know I'm getting prepared for something, right? And all of a sudden, it was like uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit came over me. And I almost saw myself as like being at Jesus' feet. Like I saw his him standing there and I couldn't stand. I like had to kneel and I was just like, wow, it was an awesome presence of the Lord just, and no one touched me. No one was praying over me. It was me and the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to, I just know that this can happen for you too, because it happened for me. So in that moment, this is what the Lord did for me. He took me back where I was there in my thirties and he showed me every pain. He kept showing me the trials, the injuries, the, the things that I went through as, as a young mother, as a teenager and every thing he highlighted, he like put that spotlight on me. It was like I was spiritually getting sick, like spiritually vomiting out the junk. Okay. And I, I got to a point where I'm like bawling, heaving. And he kept, he brought me back to my childhood, to school age years, back to things, even when I was a little girl, and then by this time, I'm like in a fetal position on the floor. Like it was like intense. And he brought me into the womb, into my mother's womb. I lost it. I was just like, wow, Lord. And then this is where it got real interesting. He brought me back in my mind's eye to the moment of my conception. And this is what he spoke to me. So I'm crying. I'm heaving. I'm a mess, a hot mess. <laughs> and in that moment when he showed me who I was, he said to me, daughter, if no one wanted you, I wanted you born for such a time as this. And when that reality came alive on the inside of me, I'm telling you, my friend, I like this. It was like hot oil burst inside of me, like warm oil. And it just filled my spirit. Like it was just like all through me. It went through my whole being in this like this cloud or this thing of joy, this bubble of joy rose up. And I, I just started just to be filled with joy. And then. In my mind's eye, he grew me up as a little girl, as a school-age girl, as a teenager, as a, in all those steps and all those pain points that I had just came back through. He brought me back forward, and he showed me the potential that I had now to affect and to do good because of what I've been through. And I'm telling you, that was a hundred counseling sessions could not have done what happened to me in that 10 minute moment. So I share that with you to go on to our next um, activity, which is this posture of prayer. Okay. So it is one, two, and three, right? The posture, the release, and the ask, because my friend, God, it's so important for your vessel to be cleaned out of the junk so that you can contain and hold the good stuff that God wants you to go forward with. Does this make sense? Is anybody getting, getting this? Okay. So in the posture of prayer, um, focus on Jesus. What is he speaking to you? What are you feeling? What are you seeing? Use all your senses. 
What is he stirring up in your heart, in your mind? What emotions? And then release. If there's one thing I can share with you, how important it is, is not to let a root of bitterness or a spirit of offense get a hold of you. That will cripple your ministry. It will cripple your calling. And that's a whole nother training, but I want you to think what burdens or offenses are you carrying? What do you still need to let go of? A lot of times forgiveness um, can feel like we're letting people off the hook. You know that they did this thing, but this is a cool imagery. Let me show you. We let them off our hook. When we do that, we put them on God's hook. <laughs> and he is the great vindicator. That's why he says, you know, that he will vindicate us, that we don't need to. So let them off the hook. Put them on Jesus' hook, okay? Lay them at Jesus' feet. All the situations, all the burdens, all of the pain, the past things. We need to let go of the junk. We need to, we're, we're um, doing some dishwashing right now. We're cleaning the, our vessel, not just on the outside, but on the inside. I know this seems like, oh, they're like, wait, where does vision and mission come in? We're getting there. Trust me, we're getting there. But this is the, the underground work that is so essential to actually get to that place of vision and mission. So, and here's another question. Ask the father, ask him, what? What do you want me to do, God? And he's probably going to say, what? What do you want to do? What is that thing, that passion inside of you? Guess what? God put it there. And you want to be in the center of your will. So that's all it is. It's like redirecting. You take a couple steps and stop and say, God, are we okay? We're okay? Okay, good. We'll take another few steps, right? And then how do you want me, Lord, to use the gifts and the callings that you have given to me? So in James 1.5, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. He doesn't hold your history um, in captivity. He doesn't hold that against you. Okay, He doesn't find fault with that. He knows we're only dust. But he does hold us accountable to what we know. So if God is highlighting something in your life right now, my friend, I highly encourage you to go with him after this training. Just journal it out, pray it out, because this inner work is so imperative for you to grow well. If you plant a seed in um, soil that is not the right soil or if it's got toxins or contaminants in it, it's not going to grow very well, right? Am I right? So um, to take um, a little cue from Nehemiah and Esther, they both prayed for wisdom and favor, and they did it with fasting and prayer, okay? If you're really at that place of, like, maybe you're in this place. Lord, I'm going through the motions. I'm praying my prayers are hitting the ceiling. I'm not hearing from you like I used to. I'm not feeling, I'm not getting that deep unto deep thing. Like my friend, that's actually a good sign. That's a good sign because God wants you to hunger after him. Okay. So I would encourage you highly to take some time of fasting and you are going to, your mind's going to be blown away when you fast for a purpose, not just a blanket. Oh, I'm fasting. Have a purpose in mind. If you are stuck on vision and mission, 
if you're stuck on your next step, if you intentionally fast with this one thing in mind, for you to get closer to God, to get clarity on your calling, God is going to show up. He's going to have people call you. He's going to have things come your way. You're going to get confirmations. I'm telling you, time and time again, God never fails. He, are, are you ready to put skin in the game? Okay, and for some of you, you might have medical things. You can fast on vegetables, okay? You can, fi- you can figure it out. All right? God will give you wisdom. And just like um, Mordecai uh, really helped encourage Esther in Esther um, 414, he said, if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. My friend, I wanted to stop right there. If God's calling you to touch a person, or to start a ministry, God's going to figure it out. If, if you don't step into that role, God will fill that role, right? It's his plan. And we just fit into his plan, right? But he wants you, and I want you to step into your place. Don't let another arise and take your place. Go after that thing God's put in you to do that specific thing. And he goes, for who knows, but that you have come to your position, to this place in this moment in time, for you to do such a thing, for you to make a difference. Who knows that you haven't been born in position for such a time as this. Amen. And then Esther replied, do not eat or drink for three days, day or night. My maids and I will do the same. So she got serious. She got serious about really pulling on heaven for the answers. Amen. And God has a storehouse for you, my friend. The Lord gives wisdom from his and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Okay? He stores up success for the upright and he is a shield to those who walk with integrity or whose walk is blameless. He will guard your corpse. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand. You will discern. You will see what is just and fair for every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will delight your soul. Don't you love it when you get an answer to your question? When you've been struggling with something um, and then, you know, God just, sends the answer and you've been like, maybe it was something really big and really heavy and you just, you prayed about it. And maybe in your dream or the next morning you woke up with like, oh, it's so simple. We could just do X, Y, and Z. And it's like, that is God's way of just coming on the scene and giving you those wisdom nuggets and those answers. So, um, It was a lot. I think we need a little bit of a B&B break, which is a bathroom and beverage break. Um, We're going to do a countdown. So do all the things you need to do in this five minutes um, and come back with um, excitement because we are now starting on some of the fun stuff, vision and mission, and we're going to get it going, girls. So go ahead and take five, my friends. Hello, hello, we're back. Everyone have enough time to do what they needed to do? (laughs) Awesome. So this is cool. Um, Angel, I'm so glad that you, so we didn't do Q&A because it got long. So we're going to do Q&A now. Um, And we're going to start with Angel because she's got a great question and many of us struggle with this. So so Angel, come on and... um, Like describe to us kind of what you're struggling with a little bit and um, where you are in the journey. So, so my mission, I, it's always been clear. It's about identity. And because like you said, um, it's always comes from a hurt or something that you've gone through. 
in your childhood or in your past. God always takes your hurt and uses it for good. So um, for me personally, it was a sense of not of not having a, a sense of identity or being affirmed of who I am and how um, how God sees me. So that's always been my that ache is to tell others about their identity. The problem that I'm coming up with is, okay, so who is my audience? Because I know for me, I wore a mask, you know, so I put on the, the, the face, the church face, even when I was a Christian that, okay, I know that God loves me, but I was still missing that sense of who I am in Christ. So how do I pinpoint who are the ones that I am supposed to be reaching if it's kind of obscure? I guess that's my question. And I've been struggling with this for a long time. Yeah, your who comes from all of the, these are clues. Like I talked to someone last night, um, can't remember who it was now. We talked about the breadcrumb trail. Like it, the Lord leaves these this trail of those those moments and what you felt in those moments of your history, your growing up, that have really formed and shaped your identity as far as your container, right? That just who who you have inside of you to reach because you have experience think of all the things you have experienced doing or the things you've overcome that gives you the status of the expert sort of speak in that particular lane to speak life to that audience that hopefully that helps a little bit um for example if you have been, and I'm like, uh, I do know Angel, but I know all, all of her story. Well, I'll take for me, for instance, growing up, um, you know, part of my history includes domestic violence as a, a child of a domestic violent home. And that is part of my story. And that is part of my who, where now the home is, is separated and you don't feel like you belong so part of my DNA is so much now forming community and creating a space of belonging. Gotcha. That's where the pain point has now helped to spur on the positive. But the God thing, does, does that help a little, Angel? Is there, can you identify something like yeah. that in your story? It does help, but I guess what threw me off is when you said that your your ministry is Christian women's Christian women's ministry. So I think your audience is like a, a lot bigger in scope than I see mine as. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking, I guess, for specifics, like, you know, your list is like veterans or single moms or something like that. And mine is, is, is not, I mean, mine can be, my, I guess my mission is the thing that I want to share with people. They could all be in all of those categories is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Identity, you know, can be for a veteran or a single mom or a CEO of a multi-million dollar company. Like it doesn't, there is no specific, uh, I guess, demographic is what I'm saying. Right. So right. how do I channel my ministry if I'm targeting like on social media or whatever, I'm trying to brand it. That's where I'm, where I'm coming into problems with, I guess. Right. So the biggest thing is to actually find a person who is your who. Like if you're like, if, if I could directly speak to one person, like maybe it's someone you know, or someone you met at the grocery store so let's say if you have a bur you have a burden for identity, and again, it could be the, the demographic could be all over the place. It could be for young girls, or it could be for <clears throat> older women in transition to season, right? 
you can you can speak to both um but when you're putting out like your social media and things like that it really helps for you to have a clear picture of C person you know um of what are they doing? What are they feeling? What are their struggles? Like really get into their head. You know, in acting school, they, they actually tell them to, to play the character, you know, and to, to be that person. So you're going to overlap into other areas. You're going to overlap into other demographics. But even if you focus, let's say you focused on a 40-year-old woman who had um, a weight issue, gone through divorce, whatever, you know, you're just picturing her in a, in a, in a position. Now you can really speak clearly to her and you and God can go through that, that cycle. And it, it could be what, because you, you do have a broad, um, identity, you know, focus, it could be what you're specifically focused on teaching that moment. So like if you're going through a series of how to reinvent yourself, like you might want to then focus more on that older age group. Or if you're talking, you're doing a training on, you know, why was I born? You might gear more towards the younger. Does that make sense? Like, so you're still in that, that realm, but you, you're seeing specifically the audience you you want to reach like because honestly and this is part of what we're going to be doing in training with daughters united and esther calling is teaching you how to speak to that green dot on your laptop okay it's very it was very hard at first but i'm getting used to it now because you know what god's painting a mental picture inside of my mind of who's on the other side of that green dot you know i i see the, the women who have been trying, trying, trying to do ministry and they're stuck with all the things, they are get, you know, drenched and enmeshed in all the things and they can't focus. And then, cause that's, that's me. I'm my avatar. I'm my, I'm my audience, right? Trying to get specific enough in a lane to make a difference in that lane. And then you can move on to the next lane. So was that helpful, Angel? Very much so. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Praise God. <clears throat> Wonderful. All right. We are going to get on to vision and mission. Yay. We're getting to the meat. Finally got to the meat. <laughs> so, so let me just explain to you the difference between vision and mission. Okay. Um. The vision is your why. The mission are like the what in the who. The vision is like the heart and the mission is are like the legs and the arms, if that makes it, if you're a visual person. Okay, so in a vision statement, a good one will tell someone in one sentence the, the big idea or the ultimate goal that you wish to achieve through your life, business, or ministry. Your mission statement is one statement. It's like your elevator pitch, okay? And you have 30 seconds or 60 seconds <coughs> to say what you're about or what you do. Um, it describes the current state of your mission. So where are you in the process of your vision? So if, you're, if your mission is here, out here, and in that timeline from here to there, from in a perfect world, this will happen. Um, where are you in that timeline? Okay. Your mission will adjust as you grow. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And you can't it's not going to always come overnight. It's a process. Talk, speak, speak this with me. Say process. Okay. It's a process. Okay. So, yeah. Your mission is. Okay. Your mission is what 
you do, who you serve, and how you do it. And I repeat that. So your, your mission is what you do, your activity, who you serve, and the vehicle of how you do it. Okay. So let's dive a little deeper into vision first. So a vision is a declaration of what will be in the future when the mission is accomplished. So in essence, the vision is the completion of many mission steps. Hoping that helps you. So <coughs> the vision serves as a foundation it serves as um, attraction. So we know in a foundation, you can't build another foundation, right? That's the foundation. And everything will be limited by that foundation. Um, it also is an attraction for the correct people, the correct, we call it tribe, um, to your cause. It also is home base to focus on the big main goal, okay? For instance, let me give you Daughters United as an example. Daughters United, our big dream is to unite and mentor the Daughters of God in every city and every region around the world. Okay, that's huge, okay? It's not something we're gonna do overnight, amen? Um, and in a perfect world, the entire body of Christ is working together. Our mission will be accomplished when each part of the body is fully connected, fully equipped, serving, and walking out love and good deeds. So that is our focus. So that really doesn't tell us how we're doing it. So that's vision. It's not saying how, you know, these, these three things, the activities we're doing, who we're serving, kind of, it says, you know, serving the body of Christ, but how we're doing it. It doesn't really say that. It just says the big vision. You're like, okay, that's the destination, but how are we going to get there? So your mission is how you're going to get there. So so let's shift now to mission. A mission statement is both, both a safety belt and a sword, okay? It's a safety belt because it holds you close to your vision, okay? It holds you close to your goals. There's a lot of mini goals, like if that's your vision, you're here on mission, there's many steps and many um, stopping points to get you to your goal. Well, it holds you close so you stay in your lane. And it's also a sword. It cuts away all that is a distraction from your mission. So I just want to give an example um, right here with our mission. When we were at the climax, the height of our outreach center uh, that we grew, uh, we were growing, growing. We were doing food, clothing, food pantry, um, soup kitchen, domestic violence outreach, pregnancy crisis outreach. We were homeless um, prevention, like all of the, all the things, right? Because it was the height in 2008, it was the height of the recession. And we like expanded, we blew up and we didn't have extra income, but we needed extra services. Um, but what happened was we were getting too wide, too fast. And the, the mission was food and clothing. So we had to reel it back in about a year later. And we had to say, this is too much for the capacity we're at right now. We need to reel it in. And it helped us to stay on mission by saying, okay, um, we cut out some of the things. We get, created a referral system for those other things. And we did food and clothing really well. Okay. Can you see where that, that helps when you get your mission clear? 
So your mission serves as a blueprint to those action steps. It also um, is an attraction to the right people. Again, it is an attraction to what you're focusing on right now. And Angel, in your case, like if you're focusing on, you know, middle-aged women in transition, that's going to attract those people. If you're focusing on identity as a teenager, you're going to attract those people. So it focuses on the people who need to hear your message, right? Um, it gives you clear focus on the goal or the step that you're on. Again, it's like you got to think of mission like an escalator. It's constantly moving. It's not stagnant. Okay. Your mission will measure your success because in that line, if your vision's over here and you're on step four on your mission, you can measure that. You can measure that we're on step four you know, three months ago, but today we're on step seven. You know, it's a measuring rod. And those mission steps also motivates your members. So can I just share this, especially if I have my friends who in, are in a church leadership. Now I have been on a church launch team. I have been in church ministry, I've been an elder. And can I tell you, especially for ministries and churches, this statement, the mission statement is the single most important tool that you will have. The single most important one for any person, because it's how you lead your life. Any family, because that is the, the, the family is the container, the safe place, right? Any business, any church, any nonprofit or program can possess the mission statement. It's what you're about. It's your DNA. So my personal mission statement is that I will show God's love to every person I meet. It is drenched in everything I do. It's in the tagline of my emails. It is in like, I hug everybody. That is just who I am, you know? And in my family, it was uh, kind of like the, the mission mesh is that we will speak kindly. We will be a friend um, to each other in every conversation. <clears throat> now, Jesus had a mission statement. Jesus said that I come so that I could give them life and life more abundantly, right? That they would have life and life more abundantly. Now his vision, the big vision, right, is that not one of them should perish. And that all we would all be one, just as the Father and He were are one, right? So even Jesus had vision and mission. He started it, it was his idea, right? So ready, ready, ready. Now we're gonna go on to the mission compass. Um, oh, actually, can we go back one slide, Tanil? Um, this is a really great um, tool to doodle on. As you can see, um, your big dream is in the bubble, the thought bubble. So you put your big idea there. And then you're really going through the cycle of the what. What will you change? What is that problem that you want to solve? <clears throat> Who will you serve? And you can list all the different people. And then how will you do it? Like what are those action steps? So this is the, the pre-sheet and we're gonna actually walk you through this process, okay? All right, on to the next slide. So <clears throat> you see that vision and mission is the center of that, that's the hub, that's the seed. That is the place of conception, so to speak. <clears throat> and all of these things around it is the process in getting there. And most times, many times, <clears throat> it's difficult to put words to your big vision until you take the steps to build it backwards. Meaning, identifying your who, your what, your how, your where, and your when. 
So this is the um, cycle that we are on. And we're gonna get to them in just a little bit, but before we go any further, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. And actually we have four elephants. <laughs> and you, we all already kind of previewed them. It's those border bullies. So I wanna dismantle them because what's going on in your head right now is you're getting all this vision, all these thoughts and, and right away the enemy's hitting you with these, the bully syndrome, okay? These, these bullies trying to, to stop you, trying to give you um, the reasons why it won't work, you know, all of that. So I wanna like cut it at the pass, right? So um, when I first realized that <clears throat> stepping out of the boat would actually attract border bullies to stop me and hit me in the gut. So we kind of like are on the target list now for the enemy because he doesn't want us to go forward, okay? So <clears throat> I don't want you to be surprised, but be honored, you know, be honored that, you know, you're doing enough harm to the, the camp of the enemy that he wants to bother you now, okay? So just keep going forward, my friend. Um, well, I knew that stepping out would be a little awkward and these bullies would come out, but I didn't expect that the bullies would come from the very people who I thought would be cheering me on. That was the biggest curiosity for me, okay? But now we know that we don't battle flesh and blood, but powers and principalities, right? And many of those people didn't even realize that they were being bullies. They didn't. But here's the thing. You can't pretend that you're not pregnant when your belly's popping out. Okay? You can't hide it. You know, vision and ideas and conversations spilled out of me like a leaky faucet. Some of these people smiled and encouraged. Others smiled and doubted. But then the naysayers and daysayers came out. Now, you know those, and I'm not talking mentors, I'm talking bench warmers. They would give me all the reasons why it wasn't going to work. My friends, mentor tip number one, be careful who you share your dream with. And when you do get feedback and hear feedback, consider the source. So here is um, an encouragement from Isaiah 30, 15. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. So don't, um, here's a quote, hopefully I don't have it written down, so hopefully I'll get it right. Don't dig up in the dark what you planted in the light. Okay, give it a chance to grow. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. If God said it, if God is speaking it to you, then you are definitely um, on the right track. But it is a process. Remember, there's a waiting room that we all have to be in. There's a, a seed time, the planting, and there's harvest. And in between seed and harvest, there is the wait. There's the waiting room. And I'm going to do a series just on the waiting room here because it's so, it's where we get stuck. So, Here's a weapon that all of the bullies like to use. So I'm going to uncover this. It's called false humility. This weapon is like kryptonite to your Superman mission, okay? Um, false humility will tell you this. Who do you think you are? Play small. Don't rock the boat. You don't want to be seen. All right, tell me in the chat, can you relate to this? Anybody relate to this? Yep. Okay, so I don't wanna just tell you the problem, I wanna tell you the remedy, okay? The remedy for false humility is confidence. It's godly confidence, okay? It's knowing 
who you are. And if someone could type this in the chat, <clears throat> Godfidence is knowing who you are. You are a precious daughter of the Most High. Equipped with gifts and callings, okay? Who you're assigned, that you have an assignment. Godfidence is dreaming God-sized dreams. They're bigger than what you could do on your own. That is how you can gauge if it's God or not. It's something that's going to take more than you to do, right? Godfidence is the ability to rock the enemy's boat. And Godfidence is able to be known for what you stand for. And that's the posture we take at Daughters United. And that's why I believe that we are still online. We've never been taken down Facebook or any of those platforms because we're not attacking anything. We are standing for what we stand for, for truth, for love, for values, for unity. Okay. And my Christian brothers and sisters, I love you. I love you. I love you. But some of you hurt me, my heart, because I'm here. My the spirit is hurting me for the attacks. We weren't called to attack each other. We weren't called to judge, okay? But we are called to be messengers. We need to be messengers of the truth in love. I'm not seeing that happening, and that's why I'm being impassioned to change that. So if we can pour our DNA to be impassioned, to speak the truth in love, we don't have to attack anybody, right? So that is, that is one of my um, sticking points, okay? <laughs> I have one that, um, so when you're, see, because if people who know me, right, I don't, I don't like conflict or confrontation, but when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of me like this, this is where, what you just saw there was my confidence, okay? It was, it's my mama bear roar because God's equipped me to do this. So you're not promoting yourself. I'm not promoting me. I'm promoting the solution that God put on the inside of me that needs to be out and needs to be spoken. I'm a messenger for God. So if you have a solution, one that just so happens to involve you, it means in the end, it's not about you. It's about the people we're serving. It's about the impact. So I'm praying that this really breaks these border bullies, what I'm sharing with you now. The bottom line is that your vision and your mission and your dream from God is going to help people. It's going to honor him. It's going to be a hope launcher. And it's going to be a home builder. Okay, it's going to be a place where you can, a hub where you can grow from. So I know that it's take a second to take that all in. That was a lot. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for sticking with me, everybody. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing the hard work. You're going to get some results from this. I can't wait to hear the, the testimonies. Okay, so what's the next slide, Tamil? Keep me on track here. I'm right in the middle of it. Okay, so we are going to try to do a breakout room. Welcome back, ladies. Awesome. I hope you had a great conversation. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> Wonderful. So um, we're going to have more of these sessions. I just want to do a, a plug. If you're just tuning in, um, we are actually offering three extra coaching sessions and those are additional, um, but we, we are offering them on Monday nights for the next three upcoming Monday evenings. And 
we are asking for um, your support because all the funds go into Daughters United. So we're looking at a $59 donation to help go to um, support us and what we're doing to create great content and encouragement for our sisters. So um, we're gonna actually be doing the offer also in our Esther Collin group and exciting news, we're gonna offer the replay in our Esther Collin group. So that's just gonna be a given. So everyone who wants to take part in it can, can do that. But if you wanna get in the coaching, seats um there's a limited number because we can only we want to spend time with each person so that's why it's a fee based and also you know when we have skin in the game we show up you know we can see that we had over you know i believe 20 some people sign up today and um not everyone was able to show up of course um but when you have something invested that you're showing up for, right? You're showing showing up. So this is kind of what we're going to be um, promoting in the coming weeks. So let's move on now to the next page. And we are gonna show you the worksheet to write your vision, yes. So this is basically the worksheet part. All right, if you can see it, that's the one we're working on, which you have it right there. So you're going to refer back to this and write as we go through these, these questions, these, um, these next word sheets is what I call them. So let me just go through this with you. We're going to, so as we write the vision, okay, these are the step-by-step -step process. Step one, we're going to identify your vision in words, okay? I have a whole list of words for you. And then we've already identified some of these other things from earlier in the workshop. Remember I said this is going to come full circle? What do you love to do? What do you get upset about? And what do you want to change? Okay, that's step two. And then identify your action words. So I have another word list that we're going to go over to you for you to like really look at. What are the actions God is speaking to my heart to take? And then we get to your who, which is step four. Who are you identifying with? Who do you want to make an impact in? And who do you want to influence? And then in step five, we put it all together. And I actually have another page for you to do that. So, so let's move on to our vision words. That's the next slide. And in your book, workbook, that is page 11, if you're following in your workbook. Because I know it's a little bit hard to see on the screen. <clears throat> so I'm going to read through these vision words. And as I read through them, you can even close your eyes or you could just really listen intently from what the Lord is doing in you right now, you know, this kind of environment is that kind of sacred space. What is he speaking to you? So jot down or circle the words that the Lord is, is highlighting to you, okay? Achievement, adventure, appreciation, assertiveness, attentiveness, authenticity, authority, awareness, balance, Beauty, belonging, benevolence, boldness, bravery, brilliance, calm, capable, charity, commitment, community, compassionate, competent, confident, Consistent, courage, creative, determined, dignity, diligence, discerning, education, equality, excellence, fairness, 
faith, family, fearless, freedom, friendship, fun, growth, happiness, harmony, heart, holiness, honesty, honor, hope, humility, humor, influence, inner peace, integrity, joy, justice, kindness, knowledge, leadership, learning, Love, loyalty, nobility, openness, optimism, patriotic, peace, perseverance, positivity, purity, purpose, relationship, reliability, Religion, reputation, respect, responsibility, righteousness, security, self-respect, self-worth, service, simplicity, sincerity, spiritual, stability, success, thankfulness, trust, truth, valor, wealth, wholeness, wisdom, worthiness, has a big list. <laughs> so in that list, some of those words kind of maybe jumped out at you. Does anyone want to share? Say what kind of jumped out at them? Definitely for me, it would be like integrity and reliability. Because in, in everything that I do, I want, I want my word to mean what I say and say what I mean. And then I want ev anybody that I deal with to have that knowledge of just, I'm reliable. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that you have that as a passion. So that is a word for your, that can go in your vision statement. That's, you know, so this is, we're picking out language and words and words are containers and can, they contain power, especially used for God or when you use the word of God. <coughs> Angel, did anything come out at you? Yeah, I'm always going to pick on you. Oh, you have it. Did you circle the whole page? <laughs> um, so, yes, almost. But I noticed a lot of these are just different ways of saying the same thing, kind of. Mm -hmm. So um, leadership, um, purpose, self-worth, those are things that stuck, stuck out to me. Purity, discerning. I'm right. All the, I'm all over the place. No, you're not. Like leadership and discernment are very, they're not the same thing. Yeah. But leadership is like the, you say, which is the father, which is the, they go hand in hand, you know. They, you, they need each other. You need each other. If you want to be a good leader, you need discernment. It's discernment's like the support of the leader. So, um, but we're looking at the language so that you can actually draft your vision and mission statement. So you need 
the words, and this is just, I mean, you can come up with your own words too. What's very helpful here is to get a thesaurus. If there's something you want to say, or let's say you're looking for your core scripture verse. What I do all the time is that I'll get a word and I'll plug it into Bible hub. Highly recommend it. And it'll come with all the different uh, variations of that in different scriptures. So it's a great study tool to do that. I so love that. That's genius. genius. Oh yeah. yeah. It's great. Or a lot of times, sometimes it gets emit enmeshed. I'll just go to Google and I'll put uh, what I remember of the verse and it'll pop up yes. the different, you know, segments of it. Or if I'm looking for images, mm -hmm. it's um, like really helpful in that regard. <clears throat> so so let's hop on to the next page. Now, these are our mission words. Like, remember I said in the other page that the why, so you, you saw on the previous page that was vision because that was the why. These are action words because this is a hands and feet of the vision, okay? So <clears throat> to give my... Um, voice a break. Who would like to read these action words? Anybody? I can read them. Perfect, Angel. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. Accomplish, administer, adopt, advance, affect, affirm, alleviate, appreciate, attain, Believe, brainstorm, build, call, carry, cause, change, choose, communicate, compel, complete, compliment, conceive, connect, construct, contact. Counsel, create, cultivate, defend, deliver, demonstrate, discover, discuss, distribute, draft, dream, drive, educate, embrace, encourage, equip. Engage, enhance, enlist, envision, expand, explore. Oh, I'm sorry, expand, faith, finance, focus, foster, gather, generate, give, grant, grow guide, heal, hope, identity, ignite, illuminate, improve, inspire, involve, journey, kindle, labor, launch, kindle, keep, lead, Learn, listen, love, merge, model, motivate, move, navigate, network, nurture, open, organize, practice, prepare, pray, progress, promote, Provide, reclaim, refine, reflect, reform, release, renew, reset, restore, save, serve, shape, shine, speak, support, touch, Trade, 
understand, uphold, validate, volunteer, work, worship, write. Awesome. So out of those verbs, what are some of the ones that are being stirred up in your heart as far as like what step you're on today? It's kind of what you want to look at. Anyone want to share? I never thought of understand as an action word, but this is just a new way of thinking of it. And I, I appreciate you adding that on there because it kind of has given me a bigger picture of exactly what a mission statement can be. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Tamiel, were you going to share? Uh, definitely create. Create and dream. That Those two stood out the most to me. Mm -hmm. I love that. <clears throat> well, there was... Um, Oh, I should, have turned, I should have circled it because we are working on gathering like-minded leaders who can discuss some things. And so understand, actually, you, you hit that, Angel. That's one of the key words that we want to do when we bring a table of diverse leaders together. We, one of the actions we, is going to be to understand one another. So... Um, the other could be to inform, so there's a, just a work in progress here, like an example, you know, so we're understanding, we're informing, um, what is the other things we want to, um, communicate with each other, create, you know, avenues of communication. We want to identify what the needs are. So there's these actions of it's the, the hands and feet of these tables, what what would to accomplish at the table. So this is where these action words are very powerful. And we're doing them like through the why, you know, why do we want to do that? Um, we, we want to create community, okay? So getting our why, or if we had a, a different bend, um, maybe it could also be service. So our why could be community and service, which that's honestly what that is. It's to create an open space where these groups, diverse groups can talk. And then how could we cooperatively have create service for our stakeholders for the people that we're reaching because we're all wanting to help people, right? So it's just that mental step-by-step -step process going through that. I hope that was helpful. So um, we're actually, we're moving, you know, once we did the heavy work, this is kind of quick, but I know this is going to also be your homework because again, I want to encourage you that vision and mission does, it does not come overnight. It doesn't even come over months. It takes years sometimes, but you're working on the step you're on. It's like building a house. You know, the foundation work takes the most planning, the most, you know, investment. A lot of times it's a big investment to, to buy the land and to, to get it ready. And that's really what we did at the first half of this. So now we're working a little quicker here, but this is, um, you know, where kind of the building takes shape. So on the next page, you're going to see the vision and mission. So these are some prompting questions for you. Um, and I love this in Habakkuk 2 too. Write the vision and make it plain on tablet so the herald may run with it. And let me tell you a little story. When I was first getting the download for our original ministry and the was probably... 1995 and vacuuming my house trying to get my work done before my kids got off the bus and um as i'm doing that i'm hearing the word go look up habakkuk habakkuk however you want to say it because i didn't even like know like i'm like 
I know it's a guy in the Bible, but is it a book? Like, how do I look this up? So, so I ignored it and I'm vacuuming and trying to finish my work. And it was like, the Lord's like, you know, come on, <laughs> I, I want your attention. So three times I finally gave in. I said, okay, I'm going to go look it up. So I, I, so while I was working, the Lord was pouring this vision into me and I knew like, okay, I have to write this down. I have to like figure out what I'm going to do with it. So I open up to Habakkuk. The very first thing I read is write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. You can't make this up. Like I didn't even know, like it was there. So I just want to tell you that the, the word of God is saying to write it out, you know, and then to speak it out. So the first step is to write it. So the vision, you would go something like, this is my dream. And then you would, here, let me see. Ah, I have my notes here on the side. Bear with me one moment. On slide 34. Okay, so this is my dream and you're gonna speak, what is your big idea? What is that thing that only God can do through you? Like that, it's a God thing. It's not a you thing. It's, it's what he wants to do. And then in a perfect world, I want to see this change. So what do you want to see change? And this is coming from your um, work, workbook pages from earlier. When my mission is accomplished, I will see like in, like I said before, in the perfect world, we will see as Daughters United, the body of Christ coming together and working cooperatively together. That's the big, the big vision. And then you shift to your mission. So you would take your action words here um, down at the third level, but in the first statement is we are a, so who who are you? Are we a business? Are we, we are a business. I am a person. I am a family. I am a ministry. So we are in Daughters United, a ministry with a passion for unity. We, now this is where you put your verb in there. The verbs that you highlighted, you can use a few of them, maybe two or three. We network and equip. Who, who, who are we doing this for? Who are the stakeholders? Who is our audience? Christian women. So in that angel, it's a broad who, right? But depending on what we're offering, we could be speaking to leaders only, Christian leaders. We could be speaking to new baby Christians, you know, so depending on the season we're in, so to speak. I hope this helps. So then you just play with, you use what I've given you here as your template, and then you play with answering those questions, and then you put them in a full mission statement. And if I can, I think I can share my screen Let me see. That's not it. I had it up earlier. Here it is. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay, so this is from our um, prayer council. Is this a little bit make it a little easier to see? Can everyone see that okay? Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Here's our mission. What are we doing? We are equipping and networking mamas and mentors. Okay. Try to keep it short and sweet. Why are we doing it? We are bringing unity and growth to the kingdom of God. Um. So then we say our values, like these are our values. This is something that the Lord helped us. If you weren't aware, 
we spent the last two years camping around a United Declaration that we actually drafted and declared last year in Seneca Falls. And it all revolved around these four pillars, sanctity of life, sacredness of marriage, the ministry of family, motherhood and fatherhood, and our identity as sons and daughters, including all of our gifts and callings. Okay, so here it is, the vision in a perfect world. We want to see the body of Christ walking in unity, building and equipping up one another and cooperatively expanding the kingdom of God as one army for our Lord. Now that's a little long. See, it, we still have a little um, wordsmithing to do, but you kind of get the idea of where we're heading. And then this is a little bit different, but on the same page as a mission statement, it's not your mission statement, but it is part of your, so if you have the vision is the big goal, the mission are the, the steps in getting there. Then you have objectives um, for those steps. So this is how, how we're doing this. We are connecting the body. We are cultivating relationships. We are coaching our sisters in Christ. So this is where building it backwards helps because our big vision is to offer a full array of coaching expertise to meet all of these needs and all of the coins. But that means that we need to fill these slots with mentors. So again, in the process of building ministry, process of building mission, the next two years we are camping on making relationships and partnerships with ministry leaders. Okay, with coaches, with mentors. So we will be collaborating on projects. And if you didn't know, we're working on um, Daughters United TV. It's actually tv.daughtersunited.org. You can go there. And actually, this training right here will be hosted there in the near future. So this will be the training hub where our mentorship campus meets. It's the central place where our teachers and coaches will host their workshops and collaborations to train up the next generation. And then we wanna celebrate. So these are all of our like activities, right? We wanna celebrate with an annual summit, a Daughters You Summit, a time to spotlight, to honor, encourage the work, the progress of our sisters um, from around the world. So, so that just kind of shows you, especially if you're building your own ministry or part of a bigger group or part of a church, it just shows you um, a little bit of how this training can help you do that. Are we good? Are we on the same page? All good? All right. So now let's pull it all together. Yes. So we were on that page. What is the next one? Okay. So I'm not sure we need a breakout room because we're only a few of us here um, today. But let's just, you know, draft, have some Q&A on the vision and mission statements. Does anyone have, um, let me see. Sorry, I'm in grabbing my a little bit of a full. Your computer does things all by itself when it <laughs> so I talked about that. So how about we do this instead of is everyone good without a break? Okay. I am just going to share about endurance in the waiting room, and then we'll close it up with Q&A. How's that sound? Okay. So I want to talk to you about the mama elephant, the dog, and Chinese bamboo. When um, you give birth to something, it means that you're going to go through a process, and you're all experiencing that process, I believe. 
and it's always most uncomfortable just before the birth. So if you are uncomfortable, sister, it's a good sign. It means that you um, are in labor, that the baby is coming and keep looking forward to the joy of holding that baby. Keep your gaze on God. So once you've planned and prepared and aligned, now you'll be properly positioned for God to propel you in your purpose. So if we just keep our dream in our head and we don't prepare, God has a place where your preparation and his time intersect. Does that make sense? So if we don't prepare and we come to that timeline, God's gracious, he'll give us another timeline. But that's why it's so important that we prepare. So even when we're not seeing anything yet, okay? I've been preparing this for 15 years. We've been intently digging in for the last five years. We still haven't really crossed, crossed that threshold yet, but it's coming. I know it's coming. Because God's going to then catapult you when you're properly positioned, God can propel you into your purpose. Okay, it's like the coach is looking for someone to put in. And they're like, these guys are talking and having a good time over here. And these guys are doing this. And there's the one on the bench ready to go. Like, that's what I'm seeing. Like, if you're on the bench ready to go. Okay, now. This is your moment. This is the time where God's super will collide with your natural. Okay. And the enemy wants to tell us, well, you're just natural. You're just that you, you know, you're not enough for this. And it's just like, no, no, God told me to do this. I'm going to do this and be faithful with what's right in front of me. God will superimpose his super on it and make it supernatural. So your situation does not limit the anointing on your life. I'm going to tell you this again. Your situation does not limit the anointing on your life. As you do what you can, faithful right where you are with what you have, you're preparing and you're ready in your mantle so you can be launched to your next level. I'm praying, this is real, like the Holy Spirit is just all over me right now. Your situation does not limit the anointing on your life. In a moment, God can change things. But you want to be the readied, wise virgin with her lamp full of oil. Amen? And this is why you're here. You are the creme of the creme coming in on a hot summer day to do this work because God has a calling and a mission and an assignment for you. Even if you're watching the replay, you invested this time to learn. So now just don't dream, just don't write, actually take action steps to do. So that's why I encourage you, I encourage you to come and join our tribe on Monday nights because this will help catapult you into what you need to do next. That's the action part. Because my friend, you can't do this journey alone. So if you're ready to take the challenge or to start a restart, if you're ready to take step one or step 101, know that you're gonna endure, that you need to learn to endure well. And most of the foundation work that you're doing is done in the dark. The baby develops hidden in the womb. The caterpillar can't see its wings in the cocoon, but they're developing. My friend, you're feeling the birth pains. You're feeling the baby kicking on in the inside of you. I know you do. That's why you're here. You have this inside of you. So I also want to share about these natural things that really speak volumes to us. So the Chinese bamboo, if you heard of the story of this, I'm just gonna be a refresher, but let me share this if you haven't. It doesn't show growth till it's in its fifth year. Imagine being pregnant with something for five years. 
But oh baby, when what's inside of you comes out in the assigned year, watch out. The bamboo can shoot up to 80 feet tall in one season after being under the ground for five years. So I wanna just pour that into you. At just the right time, you're suddenly, your growth spurt can happen too. But my friend, without those years of growing your roots deep, you wouldn't be ready to withstand the bigness of your calling, the bigness of what God wants to do through you, the bigness of your message. It's not about you being big. It's about what God wants to do through you. So we talked about those, um, you know, that false humility, right? It's not about that. It's what is God doing? What is your assignment? And let me share this with you. A mama elephant is pregnant for two years. I could imagine that. A mama dog is pregnant for two months. What's in you is not a puppy. <laughs> it's an elephant. What you carry is not ordinary. Don't get discouraged by the process. Okay? Keep doing the right thing when it's hard. I believe and declare that you are about to be launched into your purpose, launched into your calling, launched into that knowing that you know that you are walking the road, that you're in the circle, you're in the lane that God has called you to. So position yourself to envision the next level God is preparing for you. My friend, there's a cycle I didn't share on this training, but it's a real important training. A lot of what happens in your life, it starts right here. Your thoughts, okay, will affect what you feel. What you feel affects what you do. So thoughts are those pictures in your mind, right? So we need to start thinking and grabbing onto the dream God has for us. So that's where when we get in our sacred space with him, he will give us those pictures. And every picture that God gave me in vision form came to pass. I hold on to that picture like I'm holding on to a lifeline. That's when we were growing the ministry and we were still in this rundown little one room of a back house, no heat, no water, just electricity. The Lord showed me the vision of the big building. When I stood in the building we couldn't afford, 4,000 square feet, dirty, needing a lot of repair, I stood there and the Lord gave me eyes to see what I couldn't see. I held on to that vision and God provided. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the funds. I didn't have the wherewithal. But because I believed God, that's why vision is so important. And keeping yourself surrounded with people who will support you. That's why I'm saying this mentorship is key. Key. So helpful. Um, I love this. If um, We have the next slide. Did you know that God actually gets pleasure when you run your race? When I run, I feel his pleasure. I love that. This Eric uh, Lydell was a Olympian. And years, I forget um, how long ago it was. I really should know this. But I love that impression and can you just think about that when you are walking in when the creator who created you for a purpose on purpose put that time and investment in you and you are using that purpose and you are running with that purpose can you think of the joy that it gives him right 
And just like when we may make a gift for somebody for Christmas, and when we see them using that gift, it gives us joy because we put time and effort. Like if we made a quilt or something like that, right? Um, it gives it and the same with the father. So um, let's just go to, now this is go flipping all around your book, but workbook page four, it's about planning. And we're almost finished and we're gonna have some closing uh, Q and A. Awesome. So Benjamin Franklin said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Make the plan and do the plan. And I am also guilty of not doing this at times. So every week in Esther Calling, I've been diligent to put up a new planning sheet with a different focus and a different scripture. The, the focus of the week and the scripture matches. So, and then you can download this and print it and use it or just do it in a notebook or whatever you use, but, but write down the vision, write down the plan. So in mission building, making a plan and doing the plan are the two most important things to growing. When we are unprepared, the things we hoped wouldn't happen do happen, right? <laughs> the reason is simple. Being unprepared puts us out of position. Ask an athlete what happens on the field when they're out of position. Ask the teacher what happens when they are out of position. No matter what arena that we find ourselves in, when leaders and dreamers and doers are out of position, the results are the same. My friend, we lose ground. If God has given you the vision, it's up to you to run with it, even if it's a baby step. And let me tell you this, no one else will believe in the vision more than you will. As a visionary, okay, you can talk about it all, all day long. Um, you, if you're very fortunate, you will find a couple other people who will rally around and believe in the vision. But if you're the, I call you the, the torchbearer. If you're the torchbearer of this thing, you're the one in front. You're the one hearing from God and going. And you know that when you do what, when you do what you were created to do, you give God pleasure. Mm. And, you know, also, you don't know what's on the inside of you. You don't know your full potential until something pulls on it. You don't know what you could do until you try to do it. So planning is so important. If God has given you that vision, I encourage you, my friend, to take your steps. And by being here, even in this training is, you know, giving you two thumbs up, high tens, you know, you're doing it, you're here, you're showing up. So now I want to continue to encourage you. So I want to encourage you with a couple of things. Um, you are, here's some action steps you can take. You can join our Facebook group called Esther Calling. So you will get daily encouragement every day of the week. We have a different focus. So we have mentor Mondays. So as we gain more mentors to our tribe, um, they will be posting their mentor tips on Mondays. Tuesday is our tribe Tuesday. So we wanna highlight the different arenas, the different coins, um, we'll rotate those. Wednesday is our worship Wednesday where people can put up their favorite worship songs or if they are original, like I'm a worship pastor and I'm also a psalmist. I've written over a hundred songs. So it's part of how the Lord speaks to me. So here and there, you might see me putting something up. 
And um, Thursdays is pray day. So if you have prayer requests, if you have something, um, you know, that we can pray about corporately, please put that up. And we have unique days, Friday and Saturday. So Friday is by day. So Friday, if we have some entrepreneurs and business people in the group, you can put up um, a little blurb about what you do, what your service is, what you're offering. And then Saturday and Sunday is all about ministry. So any upcoming ministry events, um, you know, big, you know, not, um, not small like Bible studies. So anything that's including the region or including your area, you're having a woman's conference, you know, there's um, something big, a big outreach happening. So those big events are um, what we put up there. And um, we typically take a rest day on Sunday. I do believe in this um, honoring a rest day, whatever that day might look like for you. God, you know, created us in such a way that we do need our rest and for all you type A people out there, rest, resting can be worship. When you are resting, you are hearing from God. You are recharging and you are reviving. So I want to encourage you with that. Um, the other thing is we have a Daughters United Facebook page as well. You could see all of the videos from our 100-year gathering. We post um, the bigger events on that page. And since we have our prayer ambassador here, Angel, I'm going to say a little bit about our prayer council and when the next meeting is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, um, our prayer council is just a group of, um, a lot of them are Esther um, calling members, but not necessarily. They're actually from all over the world. We get together once a month via Zoom and we have an agenda. We get a, a teaching from Lynette and then we have a prayer focus and we go to town um, in intercessory prayer. And it's always a wonderful time. The, the spirit is so prevalent and it's always different. So it's just really um, amazing how we see God move every time. Um, our next uh, prayer council meeting is actually on July 21st, I believe. And that's, yeah. is it July 21st? It is. The last Monday in July, 26. 26. Sorry about that. Yeah, 26 at 7 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. And um, all right, you will get a, you can actually use the Zoom link here also that's already on this or um, get in touch with us somehow on Daughters United on the Facebook page. I'll be happy to send you an invite and add you to our, um, our email list. Um, it's also good because um, we also pray about upcoming events. Um, we up uphold Daughters United in prayer and covering, but we also cover our own ministries and what God is doing in our lives. And it's a wonderful way for our um, sisters and brothers to connect um, and to encourage and build up one another. So I invite you to uh, actually be a part of the next one that's coming up. Awesome. Thank you. And I just love having Angel as part of our another ambassador on our team. It's just so, Tanil, I, I say you're the, the IT ambassador and <laughs> Angel is the prayer ambassador. I love it. We're getting some great language here. So, so we're going to be closing here. Um, I just, I'm praying that this was good seed. I know you're good soil. And now it's up to you to water this. It's up to you to fertilize it and to, to make it grow. So again, we're gonna, if you wanna join Esther Calling, we'll be putting updates in Esther Calling for the mentorship. And I um, you know, just wanna invite you to come alongside us to gather, to grow, to, and to go together. Your unique gift and callings are needed to help build this network of networks across our nation and around the world for such a time as this. So, Together we meet, we mentor, we mobilize Christian women to lead, to live, and to love well in her circle of influence. So my friends, um, I just 
thank you so much. And uh, I have a link here for um, The Chosen. We can, if you want to hang out and watch it, it's a, it's a set of The Chosen. It must have been filmed in the winter because they were freezing. And it's Carrie Job actually singing The Blessing. Um, and this is my prayer for you. So I'm going to pray for you. And, um, and then we're going to listen to that. All right, so, Father, we just thank you for this time. I, I just pray uh, um, a shield of protection, a bubble of protection around um, what you've done here. Lord, it's in its infancy and in, in thoughts and process for so many. And, Lord, that you will take it, that this seed will produce deep roots and will grow a great harvest of fruit for you, Lord. Father God, take these mustard seed dreams, Lord God, and let them be put into this good soil. Let them, let them grow, Lord, so that they can be um, those trees that grow with, with healing in their leaves, with the, the fruit to nourish others from, Lord God. So we just bless this work in this time together. Thank you for your blessing, Lord, on it. And we just honor you above all else. Have your way, your will, Lord God. And we just celebrate what you are doing here. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen.